And the Duke de Zez seems to have been a soldier in his youth, and he was rightfully grand. He was the premier Duke of France, you know, absolutely the, you know, the top of the aristocracy. Um, and, and he was sort of one of the courtiers of the Comte d'Artois, who was the young, youngest brother of the king, of Louis XVI. Although he, he did command a regiment at some point, and he did fight against the English at some point, his, the most famous thing he ever did was stop a duel between the Comte d'Artois and the Duc de Bourbon. Anyway, so here is the gate of the great house that, that, that Ledoux built for the Duc de Zez. And you can see it's got um, these columns, which, you know, so they're absolutely perfect classical columns that have then got all of this very naturalistic um, carving of trophies, you know, sort of lion skins and weapons and things tied on. Here's a detail of the other one. You see the lion's tail hanging down with swords and everything. And then here is the, the plan of it. And you can see the house is down the bottom. And right up the top, there's that gate. And so you've got to drive all the way down that, that really quite long sort of driveway. And th this, is, you know, uh, this is an area of Paris called the Chaussée d'Antin, where they were building all these houses. And, and so it was sort of, you know, I think it was undeveloped land. So you were able to buy quite a big bit of land and build this big thing. But then, of course, it did mean that as the city developed in the 19th century, all these things vanished. You know, it was thought a scandal that he had a giant order, that he had double height columns, do you say? That should only be for a royal palace or for a government building. Frightful scandal. Anyway, the interest of that house is that you can go into one of the rooms, or we will be able to, hopefully, when the Musée Carnavale reopens. And it is just the most beautiful panelling. I mean, extraordinary. There's a marbleized skirting board, and then there are these panels with very naturalistic trees and all of these trophies tied onto the trees or hanging off the trees. And they're not even tied on, they're like hanging off the branches. And the carving is, and the same man, Métivier, who did the Montmorency ones, the room Boston. And so here, two of the trees and a pair of the doors, which have trophies hanging on them. But I mean, I just think that incredible is so, so beautiful. And, and the, the, the workmanship is absolutely extraordinary. So here's one of the trees with a shield with, who is that? And here another one, that's Hercules, isn't it, with his club. But look at those leaves and the ivy and the torches and the... I mean, it's extraordinary, isn't it? And here there's a, a lyre, you know, and the strings of the lyre are there, and you could practically play it, I suppose. In, in, incredible. Go and see this. It is extraordinary. And here, look at that. Look at that sort of crumpled-looking rose on the left. I mean, it's just magical. And here are a couple of the doors, um, and here something to do with the sea, and we've got some coral and beads. And here's just some ivy. Look at that ivy. Isn't that fantastic? And here, I wonder if this represents America. It might, mightn't it? An alligator. Um, and this could be Asia, I suppose. Anyway, beautiful, I think. Now, um, Ledoux, you know, one of his famous, famous things, and, and part of the, you know, part of the reason why his career all went a little bit, a little bit horribly wrong when the revolution came. Um, was obviously that he'd worked for people like Madame du Barry, who was absolutely hated. But it, the other reason, the other thing that he was hated for is that he was the architect for something called the Firme Générale, which was the, the, the tax farmers. Um, and so the tax farmers, you know, were, were a sort of private um, company that collected the tax on behalf of the crown. So the tax farmers, you know, collected taxes and so they tried to make it more efficient. And they put up a wall around Paris, wanted to make it beautiful, and so they got Ledoux to build it and to build all of these pavilions to collect the taxes. And so that, that because there were, there, were, there was sort of import duty into the city, and so they put up this wall and he built all these pavilions, which were called the Barrière. Here are some old photographs of them before they were destroyed. Um, and they're just these incredible sort of elemental designs and this massive rustication and these look at these things and there were something like 36 of them dotted around Paris this is I think this is one of the ones next to the Arc de Triomphe or it would be now 
And this is one, this is a particularly suitable sort of combination of things where here's one of Ledoux's hated barrier and in the foreground is the hated king and queen being dragged back from Varennes after they had tried to escape when Axel Fersen had organised a getaway car for them and tried to, you know, get them out of the country so they wouldn't have their heads chopped off. And here they are being dragged back into Paris by the mob past one of Ledoux's barrier. So things did go rather wrong with the revolution and he was immediately sort of suspected and he was, you know, he was all right until the terror started, you know, because from 1789 until 92, it was fairly all right. But 92, I think, you know, things did go wrong. And he was imprisoned and then I think David got him out until he, his death in 1806. Um, he really just concentrated on his reputation put together, which is why he's so famous today, because otherwise he'd be forgotten. Um, he published a great book of his work in 1804, and he intended to have three volumes, but um, and only published, I think, one of them in his lifetime. And this is the frontispiece of the book with the all-seeing eye of the creator. And this really shows he's a Freemason, and, and reflected in it is his Theatre of Besançon. And the book has all of these ideal buildings. So, I mean, partly it's got a lot of his actual projects, re-engraved by people where he's altered the design and he's sort of, yeah, well, you know, the client didn't like that idea, but I do. So, yeah, it's going into history. Uh, or he'd like, you know, oh, well, of course, we did have to put those servants' rooms up in the attic and block something. So mm, but we don't need to show that here. We'll just make it look better. And so everything looks incredible. And, and then there are the, the ideal designs for, you know, this is, he designed an entire city, the ideal city of show. And so he, you know, put together everything. So this is the church of show, you see, and this is the public baths, and it's a whole little world. And then all these completely mad and totally inappropriate buildings. This is, you know, a house for some agricultural workers. Hmm, okay. Um... This is the house of the charcoal burner. So here's the, the guy bringing his twigs in to burn his charcoal. But they are so beautiful, but so mad. This is a house for a, a country house for a gentleman with three sons. <laughs> That's fantastic. And so each of the sons obviously gets one of these sort of corner blocks. And then the father sits rather grumpily in his corner block. I mean, it's just so bonkers. Um, this, I don't even know what this is. But I, they're so beautifully drawn, you know. And of course, he had, you know, 13 years. This is a great factory complex with these pyramids on the corner. I think this is this is a metalworks. And here's here's housing, housing for the workers. And I mean, if you look, they're, they're, they're the most bonkers-looking workers' housing you've ever seen. And this sort of temple in the middle. I've never read the text, but it apparently relates to the Hypnerotomachia polyphily. And so it's 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 quite interesting. The whole thing is like a dream. And th this, I think, was the, the house for the agricultural guards who live in a sphere. And it, <laughs> it's fantastic. And the, the and the sun sun burst on the on the left. Like the whole thing. And this, of course, is the house of the um, the, the controllers of the river Lou. And this, I can't remember what this is, but it's just a fantastically mad building, isn't it? With sort of four Trajan's columns. With. This is the house of pleasure. And you, it doesn't look all that connected to pleasure immediately when you see the section and you sort of wonder what's going on. But then, then you see the plan and you sort of vaguely <laughs> understand, you know, what he was thinking about, I suppose. So that's the house of pleasure. And, and, and then this was... I think the house of sexual instruction, um, which again, you know, and I like the salon, don't you? The oval salon, which is in the sort of the top of the, um, yeah. So viewed in the landscape, it looks perfectly innocent, doesn't it? And you don't realise that that, you know, slight swelling on the on the, on on the right there is actually the right testicle. <laughs> uh, what a man! Here is the ideal city of of show. So this is the centre of it. And when I was a child, I used to look at my father, had copies of the books. 
in our house in the south of France. And so when I was meant to be resting, I used to creep into his library and go through these books and look at these fantastic, fantastic drawings. And, and, and I mean, it's so beautiful, isn't it? And then at a certain point, I, I realised that actually some of this was built. And so this central bit here actually was built. And here's, here's a, a postcard that I bought in the place. Aerial photograph of the salt works, the royal salt works, built by Ledoux at Arquesenon, you know, an industrial building of, you know, 1780 or something, um, 75 maybe. And, and, and it, it, it failed, the enterprise completely failed, it didn't work. Um, but here is the entrance. And so this entrance um, has this, you know, incredible portico. And behind the portico um, is, is, you know, this, this sort of arch framing a niche, which is the entrance to a salt mine, but all carved out of stone. There's a half sphere um, just over the door, and that originally had the royal coat of arms on it. So that was originally royal blue with three gold fleur de lis, which must have looked absolutely fantastic. And why they didn't restore that and put it back, I don't know. Um, but the place is there. And you can go, and you can not only um, visit it, but you can actually sleep there. And then inside there is this sort of semicircular field of grass. And, and, and then the director's house, which is that huge structure in the middle. And then the great sort of engine sheds on either side. And they had these enormous sort of furnace, I don't know, boilers, salt boilers. And they were trying to, you know, trying to sort of, you know, make a domestic salt industry because at the time they used to import their salt from Switzerland or somewhere. And it was the director's house and offices and a chapel. And there's a tremendous staircase goes up inside and used to terminate in a, a sort of a slightly pantheistic, rather weird chapel up at the top. And the whole thing's quite Masonic. The impact of this incredible sort of hyper butch classical architecture in that environment is amazing. Here's looking back from the director's house for the setting sun. And here they have these, these little tiny windows that are done as urns with salt spilling out of them. You see the little window there. And then this is actually the view that I woke up to when I slept there. And this was one of the most exciting things I ever did, to sleep there. Because having, having been fascinated by this whole thing as a child, you know, to go 30 years later or whatever, and actually find myself waking up. It's like waking up in a dream. 